Welcome to The Authority File. I'm Bill Mickey, your host and the editorial director at Choice. In this series, we're talking about access, access to digital scholarly content, to be more specific. There's an initiative underway called Seamless Access that can be described as very simple in concept, but difficult in execution. Let me explain why. Seamless Access, which you can learn more about at seamlessaccess.org, is a coalition-backed standard for digital authentication that enables a single sign-on. That's it. And yet, this process has been a long-standing problem for researchers who simply want to log into a publishing platform, whether on campus or off, and locate a journal article or other piece of digital scholarly content that's included in their institution subscription package. The usual IP-based access a researcher has via their institution has been working less well, especially as a single sign-on. And the problem has become so acute that it's causing a critical mass of researchers to bypass that process altogether and locate the content they need on freely available sites, whether legally or illegally. It's a frustrating user experience for researchers, and it's an alarming development for publishers and institutions who are seeing a decline in usage of some very expensive content. Seamless Access emerged from the guidelines established by the RA21 initiative, and joining me to talk more about how it works are Heather Flanagan, Program Director at SeamlessAccess.org, and Laird Barrett, Digital Product Manager at Springer Nature, which was one of the first publishers to implement the Seamless Access service. In this second episode of our four-part series, brought to you by Springer Nature, Laird explains the publisher's involvement with Seamless Access, and we learn more about the Coalition's goals and some of the ways the service can be used to bring the research community together outside of just accessing content. Okay, Laird, I just wanted to uh, jump back to you, and, and, and if you could just expand a little bit on, on what uh, Springer Nature's involvement with Seamless Access and Get FTR and... and you know, maybe more from a, um, I guess, corporate level, what, uh, what what the involvement there is. Yeah, so um, it, we should probably, there's probably a good opportunity to separate those concepts of uh, seamless access and, and get FTR. So mm-hmm. maybe starting with the, the first one, since we, we've talked about it a little bit. So uh, yep. in terms of seamless access, so, uh, uh, you know, we... We, we were uh, a part of the uh, sort of steering committee and, and the UX group, although I must admit not uh, particularly uh, active and influential members, as, as Heather w- w- will know of the, the, the RA21 uh, group when, when, it, when uh, Seamless Access was, I guess, sort of in, in, in that uh, concept phase as opposed to going into the uh, implementation phase. So we were a member of that RA21 group. Um, um, and we have been the first publisher to implement uh, the uh, seamless access uh, experience on, on one of our websites, nature.com, which we did back in November. I think that's right to say, Heather, isn't it? We are the first academic publisher to do so. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, and uh, we, some of, the, uh, um, some of the challenges that Heather mentioned there, so the, the challenges around uh, sort of the uh, surfacing the seamless access button within our site and, and, and how we want that to work and how we want the flows to work. Uh, some of the challenges um, around, uh, you know, when we don't have uh, federated authentication enabled for an institution and, and how we might handle those uh, cases, those came up uh, during our implementation. I think from a from a, a, a broader corporate perspective, it, it gets back to that uh, the, the the strategic desire uh, on on Spare Nature's side to try and ease authentication and access to our websites for uh, um, researchers so they they can access uh, in, institution subscriptions. It is the when we've surveyed and, and when we talk to our uh, researchers, um, authentication and access is is their number one problem and the number one way in which we can uh, uh, make their lives better uh, on our content, content delivery platforms. It's always, you know, can you make more content open access or free? And, and Springer Nature is a, a leader in, 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 in the area of open access, but also can you make the authentication and access problem uh, easier for us? So. It's very much uh, user and, and researcher uh, uh, problem led uh, uh, when it comes to seamless access on on our side. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want me to talk about get FTR? Yeah, sure. If you want to keep going, that would be great. Yeah. So I guess to to separate out those two things, uh, so we've, we've talked about what seamless access is. Get FTR uh, is uh, so, so which stands for uh, get full text uh, research. It's a 
I guess the best way to describe it is a is a, a, a multi-publisher uh, entitlements API. So what it does is that uh, a discovery service or scholarly collaboration network. So let's say uh, you know PubMed Central or uh, you know say Mendeley or or something like ReadCube Papers. Uh, they could use that API so that when a researcher is is on their favorite discovery service or scholarly collaboration network and they and they find articles that they're interested in, that uh, 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 discovery service or scholarly collaboration network can make a call to the API to say, "Hi, I've got this user from this institution. They're interested in uh, this article or this set of articles. Can you tell me whether they're going to be entitled to the piece of content when they go through to the uh, publisher's site?" Uh, uh, and so it's, it's meant to suck a little bit more of the pain out of the current uh, user discovery uh, authentication and access journey. So instead of a user, you know, seeing a set of results and not really knowing what their experience is going to be when they when they click on that result and try to get that piece of content, this helps to make the experience um, uh, more uh, certain. And again, getting back to the word seamless, uh, seamless for them. Uh, it does. It, it's in a state right now where. Uh, the API has been uh, built, uh, and there are, are five initial publishers participating. So uh, Springer Nature, Elsevier, Wiley, Taylor & Francis, and, and the ACS, the American uh, Chemical Society. Right. Uh, and, and we've uh, together built this uh, sort of multi-publisher uh, entitlements API. It's going into a pilot phase over the next six months where, you know, uh, any interested uh, integrators uh, or other uh, publishers are, are welcome uh, to participate. And uh, and I think we're interested in proving out that the concept can can work and 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 sort of refining um, uh, the concept with uh, uh, um, integrators. And so our, our involvement from the uh, Springer Nature side has been uh, to uh, uh, be one of the uh, sort of founding publishing partners for uh, Get Full Text Research, um, and uh, being one of the founding publisher uh, participants. I think there there has been a, a a conflation between seamless access and and get FTR. Yeah. Uh, so get FTR, uh, they they are separate uh, things. Uh, get FTR uh, at the moment, at least, uh, uh, relies on uh, the federated authentication infrastructure. So the the integrator has to pass back an institutional's entity and institution's entity ID. So they're the 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 entity that represents their identity provider and the DOIs to get FTR to get the entitlements information back. And so I think where the conflation has come is that, uh, um, you know, the seamless access experience could be implemented by an integrator, you know, a discovery service like PubMed or somebody else to uh, facilitate that uh, uh, sort of the institutional selection or authentication that needs to happen on the um, integrator side. Uh, to get that entity ID to then send on to get the entitlements data back. Okay. And, and seamless access could make that easier, but it's not necessary, right? You can implement get FTR without uh, um, uh, seamless access. You could just have, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, a, a search for an entity ID or, or um, a federated access set up uh, without seamless access on the uh, integrator side. Okay. Um, you, you mentioned uh, the it sounded like the participating publishers are actually uh, building um, uh, Get FTR. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like exactly who's doing what and and how that's all being executed? Yeah. So there's, as I said, there's five publishers involved. We've just, uh, you know, we funded the, uh, you know, building of that 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 uh, Get FTR API. So a single API that an integrator can 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 call. Uh, and that then uh, makes calls to publishers APIs to get entitlements mm. uh, information back. Um, uh, you know, it's not not anything. You know, it's an API. It's nothing uh, uh, too complex. So that that's been the level of involvement so far. I'm sorry. Does that answer your question, Bill? Do you... Yeah, I, I guess um, in terms of like the collaboration, I was kind of curious how that that kind of broke down among the the publishers. Sure. I I mean there are. There are usually people at each publishing house who are involved in uh, identity and, and access management in, in some in some way way shape or form, uh, and I think all of those people are trying to solve similar problems for end users. And I think we realize that uh, solving those problems in on on one publisher's website has limited value to the researcher. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, 
you know, researchers are bouncing in between uh, publishers' sites to get content. And so if you just make that authentication and access experience easier on one publisher's site, that's that doesn't really solve the problem for researchers. And so the question is, how do you solve it? Um, you know, how do you solve that uh, um, uh, for researchers across all, all publishers' sites? And so it, I think it makes sense from all of our perspectives to, to try and solve that problem collaboratively. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously there's some precedent for that with seamlessaccess.org, uh, which is sucking some of the, that, that pain out of the, uh, out of the researcher experience. But there's still, you know, there's the, the fact is that even with that, there's still pain in that experience for users. And so the question is, well, what's the next step? How, what's the next piece of pain that you can suck out for uh, researchers so that we're getting to a place where it is, it is again, uh, you know, seamless and easy for users to find the content they want and, and get through to the, the content uh, they want um, uh, in, a, in a sort of legitimate and legal way. Right. Okay. Um, Laird, one more follow-up question. You mentioned um, nature.com, um, I think, was the first to roll out uh, with uh, seamless access back in November. Um, and, you know, you know, whatever challenges might have might have come through in that in that in that implementation. I'm wondering who then um, works with the institution, I guess. Um, is it the publisher, you guys, or is it the folks behind seamlessaccess.org? You know, where does once once it be, is implemented on an institutional level, who who kind of works with that institution on 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 that uh, on rolling that out? So I think that again, maybe we this can maybe gets back to a point of, of separating out uh, concepts to a certain extent. So the publisher implements the seamlessaccess.org experience, mm. and so uh, um, and that's just an experience over the federated um, oh, access right. okay. uh, authentication method, if that makes sense. So yes. we already we already had you know roughly twenty five hundred institutions set up with federated access uh, to nature.com. And so we just implemented a new experience of that, uh, a new and better experience of that on nature.com. So all of the researchers from those institutions who had enabled federated access got the benefit of uh, uh, that, that new experience of the authentication method. Okay. In terms of uh, uh, sort of how do we work with institutions to enable federated access on our, our platforms, uh, that is an interesting and I think pressing question as well. So you know, we, along with, uh, I think every other publisher have always taken the approach of enabling that authentication method, uh, uh, uh by, by request, uh, which is why, uh, you know, only, a, quite a small percentage actually of our institutional customers have, um, uh, federated, uh, uh access enabled. Um, uh, and generally we, we've been pretty passive about, um, uh, reaching out to institutions and saying, Hi, we've got this authentication method which could ease authentication for the the patrons at your institution when they're outside of their institutional network. Do you want us to go ahead and, and turn this on for you? Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, I'm interested in uh, um, becoming more uh, uh, active in that area and and talking to institutions about the, the the benefit of this method, particularly with the seamless access experience. Uh, hopefully, being um, more broadly implemented across uh, publishers' sites and talking about the benefit uh, for researchers. Yep. Um, and so I think I think having that conversation is is partly a conversation between uh, the uh, between between publishers uh, and seamlessaccess.org and the various sort of country level federations that uh, many institutions are are a member of, mm-hmm. uh, and and help to enable uh, federated access for the institution. Uh, from my perspective, at least. Yep. So I want one thing I would uh, throw in in here is uh, you're 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 touching very carefully on a, on one of the ongoing challenges with um, federated identity broadly. You know, even even outside of what we're talking about with seamless access and whatnot. Um, in in the use case of uh, publishers and scholarly uh, material, there's there's a really interesting gap usually on on the actual campus itself between the the organization at the campus that does identity and access management and runs their identity provider, their IDP, and the library that does the uh, contracts with the publishers and handles the subscriptions. And in many of the institutions that I, I know and love personally, those two groups don't like each other very much. 
<laughs> they 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 have a really hard time communicating, and some so sometimes um, the libraries don't know uh, if they are if their institution is a member of a federation, um, and they they the communication gap that's on the campus side is is an ongoing challenge for all of the service providers and even the federations who want to enable more services, but it, it, we we have this narrow pipeline of how we can communicate into the campus themselves. This has been a problem for a couple of decades. Yeah, I think I absolutely agree with that. So I think while the technology is there and often, you know, are already set up across many institutions and, and publishers, there are uh, sort of cultural and institutional factors that are, are uh, uh, preventing its its enablement. Uh, that that sort of relationship between uh, ID departments and and uh, sort of library administrators uh, being one of them, um, and you know I think there are other cultural and in institutional factors that exist. You know some some things that I've heard from library administrators are are things like concerns about uh, privacy, for example, um, uh, and and I think those are those are just conversations that we partly that we need to have to to uh, clear up some of those concerns and, and help to make it easier to, to enable federated authentication. We just heard from Heather Flanagan, Program Director at SeamlessAccess.org, and Laird Barrett, Digital Product Manager at Springer Nature. Join us next week when we continue our conversation and talk about some of the privacy issues cropping up around Seamless Access. Seamless access is about the identity discovery process. That's really all it is. It's not about storing a username and it's not about storing a user password. We have no idea what the username and user password is. It's not about um, requiring any particular attributes about a user be released. The identity provider actually controls that behavior. Uh, and seamless access itself doesn't. It, we're we're enabling one piece of a you know the the full end end federated authentication workflow. Uh, a lot of concerns have come forward about you know well, what about the privacy of the user? Well, yes, that's actually incredibly important, which is why we're not storing any of the user's information. If you like what you hear, rate us or give us a review on your podcast platform of choice. And if there's a topic you'd like us to cover, drop me a line at bmickey at ala-choice.org. As always, sponsorship and advertising for the Authority File podcast are handled by Choices Advertising Manager Pam Marino. And all of our episodes are produced by Choices Digital Media Specialist Mark Dirks and Digital Media Assistant Sabrina Kofer. That's all for this week. Thanks for joining us.